Hi, I'm Dr. Norman Rowe. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon and today I'm going to talk a little bit about breast reduction and breast lift surgery. These are very common procedures, breast lift being one of the top five procedures performed by plastic surgeons in the United States and breast reduction surgery uh, being one of the uh, top ten procedures performed uh, by plastic surgeons in the United States. A lot of my patients come to me and they mentioned that they have neck and back pain due to large and droopy breasts. Uh, they are not able to be involved in certain, uh, certain activities. It affects their activities of daily living. They're not able to go to the gym. They're not able to wear certain clothing. And breast reduction surgery and breast lifting surgery can alleviate, if not all, uh, but a lot of those problems and issues. So let's talk a little bit about it. There are a couple different ways that we can do a breast lift and breast reduction. I have a little drawing I'd kind of like to show you. One of the more common ways that you can do a breast reduction surgery involves making a cut around the areola, making an incision down the breast, and then an incision underneath the breast. And we call that the anchor incision for obvious reasons. It's a very popular method by which um, uh, to do a breast reduction. However, it is by no means the only way to do a breast reduction uh, and a breast lift. Another very good option that I like to uh, recommend to patients involves making a cut around the areola, making a cut that goes down the breast, but no cut underneath the, underneath the breast. And I call that the lollipop incision. Now one of the benefits of the lollipop incision over the anchor incision is if down the road someone decides that they like to wear a low cut dress, that scar can be visible. Also down the road if someone decides to wear a bra with an underwire on it or in it, that underwire can rub that scar and bother the patient, irritate the patient. Also the incision of the lollipop is about half of the length of the anchor incision. So the surgery is much quicker and the recovery is much quicker than say the anchor incision. And finally, the lift that is performed is a much better looking and a longer lasting lift than the one that is performed with the anchor incision. So a lot of my patients ask me, well, if the lollipop is a better technique for me, why would most doctors, most plastic surgeons recommend that I get the anchor incision? And I think a lot of it has to do with the doctor's uh, comfort level. Um, I perform a lot of breast reductions, breast lifts. I use a variety of different techniques. I'm not saying that the anchor incision is bad, I'm just saying it's not the only technique out there. And uh, I think a patient has uh, options, and I give my patients options. I give them an option of a smaller scar, um, or if they want a little bit larger reduction, a little bit larger scar. But the anchor incision is by no means the only method by which you can get um, a breast uh, reduction surgery. I routinely perform uh, large breast reductions with the lollipop incision. Also remember with the anchor incision, and patients ask me this, what happens with the scar? Remember once you have a scar, that scar is with you the rest of your life. There's very little you can do to try and uh, uh, improve on a scar and there's certainly nothing you can do to remove a scar. So you have to think long and hard about which technique you want. But Keep in mind, the lollipop works for the majority of women having breast reduction surgery. With regards to the breast reduction surgery, I always tell my patients that it is, uh, we routinely perform it on an ambulatory basis, meaning you come in in the morning, you have the surgery, and you go home the same day. The recovery time is uh, very quick. It's seven to 10 days for the lollipop incision, and you're pretty much back to your normal routine. It's a relatively painless procedure. I do uh, inject a long-acting anesthetic into the breast when I do the procedure in order to minimize the pain. I do give patients some painkiller in case they have breakthrough pain, and I also give patients some anti-nausea medication in case they're nauseous after uh, the procedure. A lot of my patients come in and they uh, need a reduction and a lift, and a reduction is pretty much just like it sounds. Um, you remove the breast tissue in order to lighten up uh, the breast, and a lift is really 
just a repositioning of the nipple. You raise it from a lower position to a raised position, to a more neutral position. Uh, a lot of women ask, in order to raise the nipple to, uh, during the lift, am I going to cut it off and reattach it? And the answer is no, I'm not going to cut it off and reattach it. If you do that, you lose the feeling in the nipple. Even though the nipple may look like a nipple, you lose feeling in the nipple and you lose the ability to breastfeed. The way I do the lift is I leave the nipple attached and I raise up the entire breast. And, mo and both of these procedures, the reduction and lift, are usually performed during a routine breast reduction surgery because most women not only need a reduction, but they need a lift. A lot of women ask, can I expect to get improvement for my neck and back pain after uh, this procedure? And again, while there is no guarantee, the vast majority of women do have improvement in their neck and back pain. They, they have improvement in their quality of life. They're now able to wear a different type of clothing. They're able to go to the gym without wearing two or three sports bras in order to keep them from bouncing. Most women, if not all women who have this procedure done, are very, very happy with the results and their quality of life after the surgery. The surgery is not too terribly painful. Um, I do inject a long-acting anesthetic into the breast to minimize the pain after the surgery, and I give anti-nausea uh, uh, anti medication in case someone is nauseous after the surgery. The recovery is quite quick, especially with the lollipop incision. Usually uh, in five to seven days, you're back to your normal routine. I do suggest uh, you know, um, refraining from going to the gym for about two weeks, just let everything heal and most people tend to overdo it when they go to the gym. Now I always mention to patients, regardless of um, uh, the technique, there is a small chance that you could lose feeling in the nipple just from the mere fact of having the surgery. The vast majority of women maintain feeling in the nipple, but there is a small chance, so we have to keep that in mind. A lot of women ask me, am I going to be able to breastfeed after uh, the breast reduction surgery? And my answer to that is, it really depends if, if you're able to breastfeed before the surgery. You must keep in mind that 25% of women walking down the street are not able to breastfeed. And breast reduction surgery is certainly not going to change that. So if someone knows that they're able to breastfeed, namely they've had a child before and they breastfed, then the surgery usually does not, you know, impart, and then the surgery usually does not change that. But if someone has not had a child before or we don't know if they're able to breastfeed, I really can't answer that question because I don't know if you were able to breastfeed before the surgery. The surgery is done ambulatory, meaning you come in the morning, you have the surgery, you go home the same day. You do visit me the next day uh, to make sure everything's okay, and then you visit me about a week out from the surgery, then in about uh, one month, then three months, then it's six months after the surgery, and then at a year after the surgery. It's quite a few follow-ups, but I do like to keep an eye on, on all my patients to make sure everyone is progressing nicely and they're healing the way I'd like them to heal. All my breast reduction and lift surgeries that I perform, I perform in an accredited operating facility, and I use a board-certified anesthesiologist to give you your anesthesia. That's very important. Obviously go to a board certified plastic surgeon for your surgery. And secondly, if you're, you've already been on a consult and, uh, and you're contemplating a breast reduction surgery and your surgeon says you absolutely have to have an anchor incision, that may not necessarily be correct. So if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call or visit my website at www.normanrowmd.com. That's www.normanrowemd.com. Or you can call my office at 212-628-7300. Thank you and thanks for watching.